The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve shows how the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin, an oxygen carrying protein in red blood cells, changes from the lungs to the tissues. On the y axis is the oxygen saturation, SO2, which is essentially the oxygen fullness of red blood cells, and on the x axis is partial pressure of oxygen in the body, PO2. Before we begin, here are important numbers to remember about the normal, healthy individual. Systemic arteries appear red because they have a large amount of oxygenated hemoglobin. That is, PO2 equals 100 millimeters of mercury, and PCO2 will be at its lowest in the body at 40 millimeters of mercury. Systemic veins have deoxygenated hemoglobin, which is dark red, but appears purple through the skin. So their PO2 is much lower after giving it up to the tissues at 40, and their PCO2 is higher at 46 after receiving the waste product from the tissues. How are these gases carried? Oxygen is transported in two ways, by being dissolved in plasma and by combining with hemoglobin. The dissolved oxygen is usually insignificant because for every millimeters of mercury of pressure, only 0.003 milliliters of oxygen will be dissolved per deciliter, 100 milliliters, also referred to as 0.003% by volume. So for a pressure of 100 millimeters of mercury, there is only 0.3 milliliters of oxygen per deciliter, not very much. However, each hemoglobin can bind four molecules of oxygen. The average man has 16 grams of the hemoglobin protein in a deciliter of blood, and the average woman has 14 grams. Each gram of hemoglobin can bind 1.34 milliliters of oxygen, and so 16 grams per deciliter times 1.34 milliliters oxygen per gram equals 21.44 milliliters of O2 per deciliter. Combined, this equals about 22 milliliters of oxygen per deciliter, a 22% solution. What about carbon dioxide? Only about 5% of CO2 is dissolved in the plasma, but it is still much more soluble than oxygen. Note that this does not mean CO2 is carried as gas bubbles, which is a good thing because air bubbles in your blood can be fatal. Know the CO2 is dissolved in blood just like the CO2 is dissolved in soda before you open it. About 10% of CO2 is transported as carbaminohemoglobin. This is a modification of the hemoglobin protein formed in the capillaries. When O2 leaves, the blood's ability to carry CO2 increases. This is known as the Haldane effect, and carbaminohemoglobin is the main contributor. Finally, the vast majority, about 85%, of CO2 is transported as bicarbonate in the plasma. CO2 and H2O combine in the red blood cell because of the catalyst carbonic anhydrase to become carbonic acid. H2CO3, which then dissociates into H plus and bicarbonate. The bicarbonate then leaves the cell and is mainly found in the plasma. In this way, CO2 can be thought of as an acid because it so easily becomes carbonic acid in the blood. So now back to the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Notice that it has a positive sigmoid slope, which means when there is a higher partial pressure of oxygen, there will also be an increase in the saturation of oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen when hemoglobin is 50% saturated is known as its P50. The partial pressure of lungs and tissues are on either side of hemoglobin's P50, and this is a good thing because when blood is exposed to the outside air contained in the lungs, it will saturate the blood. Then, as blood is transported to the tissues where the oxygen is being used, there is a lower partial pressure and thus a lower saturation allowing the oxygen to dissociate and enter the tissue. If the tissue happens to be muscle, the oxygen dissociates from the red blood cell's hemoglobin and it will bind to the muscle's myoglobin. Myoglobin is a iron-containing protein with a curve that looks like this. The steep slope can be interpreted to mean that myoglobin binds oxygen very tightly. This would be bad for blood because it doesn't easily dissociate at normal partial pressures of tissues, but it's good for muscles because it easily, essentially grabs the oxygen from the blood. Myoglobin's P50 is very low, 
so it will hold on to the oxygen until the muscle really needs it. High concentrations of myoglobin in muscle cells allow animals to hold their breath underwater for a longer period of time. The other iron-containing protein that you should know about is fetal hemoglobin. This is a protein found in babies before they are born that allow them to receive oxygen from the mother. It has a curve like this. Its P50 is lower than hemoglobin, which is important because at that level of oxygen pressure, a significant amount of oxygen will rather go to the fetal hemoglobin than hold on to the mother's hemoglobin. The fetal hemoglobin holds the oxygen a little bit more tightly, such that at the same partial pressure, it will be more saturated. The P50 has an inverse correlation to the tightness of holding onto oxygen. So the very low P50 of myoglobin holds the tightest. If, for whatever reason, you were to receive a transfusion of blood containing myoglobin or fetal hemoglobin, your dissociation curve would undergo a left shift. If you take a standardized exam, you will see the terms left shift and right shift. These correspond to the P50 of your blood, depending on what changes. A lower P50 would correspond with a left shift, and a higher P50 corresponds to a right shift. The other reason you might see a left shift is if the blood is exposed to carbon monoxide. The presence of carbon monoxide causes oxygen to bind with greater affinity, increasing the tightness, lowering the P50, and shifting the curve to the left. This is a bad thing because if oxygen is held tightly in the blood, it won't dissociate when the tissue needs it to, causing severe tissue hypoxia even if there is normal breathing. The reasons the dissociation curve would shift right are summarized by the mnemonic cadet face right. CO2 can react to become carbonic acid, and acid, a lower pH, causes lower affinity for oxygen, a higher P50. This is known as the Bohr effect, and can be thought of as kind of like the opposite of the Haldane effect mentioned earlier. High concentrations of 2,3-diphosphoglycerate, or 2,3-DPG, and high temperatures have a similar effect as acid, which requires greater pressures to achieve the same level of saturation, that is, a higher P50. Higher CO2, acid concentration, and temperature are all things found in exercise, which completes the mnemonic. That's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more.